joined by Scottish Rugby Vice President Dee Bradbury. Dee, congratulations. Um, your immediate reaction? Delight. Delight that the clubs have had the vision to support me in this role. And then I think my second reaction was I must go and phone my 85-year-old father, which I did, and that was an immense moment. What did your dad say? I'm so proud of you. Mark, the end of uh, an AGM, a lot of business covered, and a historic moment during the AGM. Absolutely. Uh, uh, the first female president, I think, in, in Tier 1 rugby, uh, certainly I think in major Scottish sport as well. Uh, Dee Bradbury's election, I think, has been uh, a remarkable event today. I think people have realised now that, that, I think Sheila Begbie mentioned, you know, from the playing field to the boardroom, and that has really happened now in Scottish rugby. Uh, incredible forward-thinking result today from, from, from the election. But more importantly, I think it shows how seriously we're taking uh, women's sport and the women's game in general. We now have Sheila Begbie, we now have Leslie Thompson, and we now have Dee Bradbury in very, very key positions in the organisation, senior positions in the organisation. And, and, and that is something we've been striving for and we've brought about much earlier than we thought we would do. And groundbreaking uh, across Northern Hemisphere rugby. In fact, we think across the, the Tier 1 nations. We think so, we think so. And, and, and as I say, it's one of those kind of things that um, this is a woman that's steeped in rugby, that's been involved in the grassroots game, but is also going to bring a new dimension to our sport. And we're, we're just delighted with that result. Well, obviously, the women in the men's unions in integrated in 2009, and since then, it's become very clear to me that out of most sports, Scottish rugby is one of the most fully integrated and welcoming for women. I didn't undertake this role to be a, a broad feminist gesture, purely that I thought it had qualities to bring to the role. And as far as a male-dominated environment, I went to a boys' boarding school. I was one of a handful of girls. I was 30 years in the police, which is also a male-dominated environment. That doesn't fill me with any fear or trepidation, far from it. But my own club, which is one of the few that I can speak for at Open Lawn, fully integrated, women on the committee, we look after each, you know, the women look after the men, the men look after the women, fully supportive of each other, we support each other on match days, and I think that's a model that we should try and roll out throughout the whole of Scotland, and more and more clubs are embracing that, which is, is fantastic. As I said earlier, it's not from a feminist perspective, any shape or form, it's purely about what I can effect within the organisation. The impact of what you see about it being an historical moment hasn't quite sunk in yet. It, I'm just me. Um, and throughout the whole of Scotland, yes, there are women o occupying prominent positions. And, yeah, that's good. It's a good thing. It must be, I guess, a, a particularly emotional moment for you today. Well, I had difficulty understanding and believing it last year. I'm not really any further forward this year. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's a huge opportunity. It's very exciting. And it is a privilege, but it's much more than a privilege. You owe it to so many people uh, to get on and develop the important things in the game.